Sometimes folks on the farm, you just got to kind of make it work. And some of our areas on the farm that we garden are quite a ways away from the main farm. So what do we do? Well, we get ourselves some really cheap um, IBCs. Um, these things can be bought for a song and a dance. Um, this particular one had a little bit of oil in it. And I got a pallet here for free um, and an IBC for almost nothing, thanks to my brother. So I'm going to show you kind of how we put these together and how we use them in the farm. I get a bunch of these kind of um, electrical uh, metal um, pipe holders. And I take the pallet and I take the empty IBC and I throw it on it. And I just take some, you know, barn screws um, for like sheet metal or whatever. They seem to fit the hole really nicely. I put these on the bottom track of the IBC and I screw it to the pallet. Why? Because I want a little bit of height off the IBC. And on top of it, I want to be able to very, very easily trust that my kids can get into this and pick it up with the skid steer and not damage the tote because we're going to move it around the farm at times. Because at the beginning of the season, one of our silo planters needs water. In the middle of the season, sometimes as we get into the drought, we need to get water to some of the orchards. And you know what? These things hold 275 gallons. And with a simple adapter that you can buy off eBay for like 20 bucks, you can basically hook these things up to a garden hose and have a nice valve. You could hook them up to a trickle hose and do it that way too. Um, or, or, or you could put them up high enough in the air that they fill a bucket or a watering can. It's really easy. And the nice thing is on a farm, you can move these things to wherever you need to. So now I've got it uh, strapped down to the pallet. Um, time to kind of get a look at the inside and see what it's like. Yes, it's all dirty. Don't worry about it. Yep, tiny bit of oil. Nothing a little Dawn dish soap isn't going to fix and good spray out and clean. So that's what I'll head to next. Also, I need to put the valve on it. So this is a two inch, um, two inch fi fine thread coupler um, to um, a half inch um, valve and uh, garden hose end. And you can buy those, like I said, completely made up right off of Amazon. So there's this little lock mechanism on here, so it's got its own valve control already. I'm just going to break that off, and you can see there's some dirt here below it. I'll clean that all up in a bit. And this just threads right on. Um, this is a fine threaded one, so I just got to get it, get it started right. It's got a neoprene washer inside it. You just thread it on until it becomes tight on there. Once it's on tight, um, just thread on the top section so you can put the, the valve on. And basically you're ready to fill it up. And then you can control the water flow either to a trickle hose, a regular hose, or even to pour into a bucket and fill it. If you want to put it into a bucket, you're going to probably stack it on a few more pallets than this just so that you can get it up higher. It works absolutely fantastic. I'm really pleased how these things work. I'm able to fill one of these 275 gallons in probably less than 30 minutes. I can go stick it in an orchard and it'll last me three to four weeks um, of water for them to just systematically water plants. So here I filled it up. I'm going to put this back on the end of it here. Um, you can see it looks a little green there. The water's, the water's in this one, which is great. Now, we let these things sit outside, folks. The water inside does get some sunlight on it, and when it does, it gets algae on it. But I tell you, I think the plants absolutely love it. I think, um, I think they like the algae water. If you don't want to do that, you just have to cover these, make them black so no sunlight gets through them and you won't get algae growth. I don't seem to have a problem with it. We just power wash it off the inside later on when we go store them for the winter and we always store these things completely open so they're drained out and uh, they do fantastic. So I got 275 gallons in this. I'll get the uh, 325G out here and we'll get this thing hauled. So I stick into it with the forks. I can push right up to the pallet because the pallet's a little bit bigger than the IVC tote. Off we go. Um, I'm going to take this one up to the um, orchard um, in the back and I'm going to take another one up to the um, silo feeder up at the other place here and then I'm going to put one of these in the walnut orchard too. So there's going to be um, several of these moving around the farm. So once I got it up here I threw a couple more pallets down just to get it where I wanted. Got a beater hose. Uh, we run it across the driveway when we need it and fill up our watering cans and we hand them up to the girls and they go up and quick water in the silo. This year's silo crop is melons, um, particularly the, the cantaloupe and the little sugar babies. 
and it works fantastic. This gravity fed, folks, there's no pump. So yeah, I mean it ain't you know rushing out fast. It's got a little air in the line yet, so it's 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 coming. But um, you know, after you've used it once or twice, the air is out of the line for the most part. It does great. It really does. It really just it settles down and runs really nice. Um, my wife likes it because again, she's got water in areas she wouldn't have water. Um, it makes it so she doesn't have to trailer it out there and, and water. This is how we use our IBCs. Um, fairly inexpensive for us. And they work great, folks. Thanks for watching.